This is the Inayu BI-B63 25,000 milliamp hour fast charge power bank. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this device, keep watching. All right, quickly, just a couple things before we get started. First, I want to thank the company Inayu, at least I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, I-N-I-U, for sending me this device so I could share it with you. Now, the quick backstory is I just got back a two, couple of weeks ago from visiting my son and his wife who are living and working in the United Kingdom, and I wanted to take my cell phone, my tablet, and a few devices like that with me, so I wanted to take a few power banks. I say a few power banks because that's exactly Exactly what I took. These are the smaller power banks that I own, and these are what I took with me. Now, they're different sizes. I think this one is 10,000 milliamp, this one is 8,000 milliamp, this one is 6,000 milliamp. So, all told, they equal uh, pretty much to the same capacity as this one power bank does, but this is a fast charge power bank and will deliver the current much more quickly than any of those uh, other devices together. I'll explain more what I mean. So, why don't we do exactly that? Let's go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for this device. I'll go over its physical specifications as well as its performance specifications. I'll talk about its operations, maybe even demonstrate it, but it's really, really simple. But more importantly, I'll talk about my experiences with it. All right, just before we take a closer look at the NIU BI B63 fast charge power bank, I'll share with you what else it came with. This is the box the device arrived in. Inside of the box, of course, there is the uh, user's guide and warranty information. It did also come with a nice little stuff sack. And what that is most useful for, besides protecting the device, is holding the two cables that it came with. So it did come with a USB Type-C charging cable and a USB fast charge PD type cable as well. So they're not only useful for charging other devices, but they can be helpful in charging this device up when you need to. So let's go over some of the key features. And this is the one I think appealed to me the most. It's not the only one of worth noting, but it is the one I, I found quite important. And that is, this is a 25,000 milliamp hour battery, as already mentioned which is approved by most airlines for carrying on board the plane. And I'll talk about why I found that important in a few minutes time. Now, it does come with a three-year warranty, also of high importance as well, but there is a third feature, not something I was looking for at all. And, you know, certainly not a deal breaker, but boy, is it ever nice to have. Do you see the little pullout space right here? That is, it's not a docking bay, but it is a holder for something like a cell phone or a tablet, but can be set in there as well. And that was useful, would have been useful, I didn't have it with me at the time, when I traveled to the UK, because of course it is a six hour flight in one direction, seven hour in the other direction. And I was able to take my tablet and the, that stack of power banks I showed you, and able to watch a movie I had downloaded on to the tablet itself. This would have made it just a little bit easier, sitting this on the tray in front of me and having that stand to hold the uh, tablet up. Now, I'll just go quickly through the physical specs specifications. So let's start with the weight. It's a, got a bit of weight to it. 16.7 ounces, 475 grams. In this dimension, it is 5.85 inches, which is 148.59 millimeters. In this dimension through here, it is 2.87 inches, 72.89 millimeters, and thickness through 1.34 inches, 34.0 three millimeters. As mentioned, it is a 25,000 milliamp hour battery. It can be expressed as 92.5 watt hours. It's another way of saying the same thing. The input is rated at 45 watts. So uh, yeah, you'll need some type of, if you want to maximize the charge, I mean, you can charge it with any, any device that'll plug into it, but the maximum charge it will accept is 45 watts. And I happen to have a fast charger capable of 100 watts but again, it'll only accept 45 watts. Now, outputs. Output, there are three output ports on the outside. Two of them are USB Type-C fast charge ports, with the third one being a USB Type-A output port. So each of these ports are rated as follow. The primary one, which is an input and output port, it rates at 65 watts outgoing. So you can charge a device to a maximum of 65 watts, again, alone except 45 coming in. 
The second port is a 30 watt port, so you can charge something to a maximum of 30 watts. And the USB type A is a 22.5 watt maximum. Now I keep saying maximum for a reason. If you're using one port alone, those are what they'll deliver. But if you start combining ports, one and two, one and two and three, two and three, whatever the combination is, you're going to get different outputs from the ports. So there's quite a few combinations and rather than bore you with those, I'll put those combinations in the video description if you're interested in seeing more about it. Okay, operation could not be simpler. It's just a simple button right here on the side. And when you press that button, it'll light up the display right here, which will show you the capacity remaining in the battery. You can see it has 100% capacity. I just finished charging it up for a reason. And simply put, the reason is we're in the middle of a hurricane, Hurricane Lee here in Halifax. And even though I've been testing this for some time, I just wanted to make sure during this hurricane, while I still had power before the power goes out, that I kept everything I had up to the full charge. So that's all there is to it. When you uh, plug a device in, you're you're not going to see power output or anything. It's just going to continue to charge the device. So I think I can probably do that now. Here is my older Galaxy cell phone. I can put a USB type A cable in there. Put the other one in here. It'll take a second for it to come on. There we go. All right, starting to charge now. I just wanted you to see that it is charging. Um, that USB type A cable will charge it at probably five watts power because that's what my phone is willing to accept from that port. What I did find though, and I've got no way of measuring it, is if I use the USB type C fast charge cable, plug that in, plug it into the primary port, it will also charge my phone and it seems to charge it faster. Now, the rate at which your device will accept the charge is dependent on the device itself, as well as whatever the charging unit is. If your device can accept more current, then it will. If it can't, it just won't. So it makes it that simple. So I believe this is taking in seven, eight, maybe even nine watts right now, because my experience has been, and I can show you the status right there when I press the button, that it seems to charge a little faster when I'm using the fast charge ports on this. The only thing is I say, I really can't verify that. It's more of a, an experiential thing in terms of how quickly it is charging. All right. Not a lot more to show you on this, but what I'll do is I'll wrap up with a few comments. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few more comments on the NIU BI-B63 fast charge power bank. So who is this for? Well, primarily one of the reasons I appreciate having this device is having all that power, 25,000 milliamp hours in one package for traveling so that I can just have one power bank to power up all my devices. Now. It is a fast charge power bank. It delivers up to 65 watts of power. I really can't take advantage of that with the devices I have. However, you may be able to, if you have a phone, a tablet, a laptop, or some device that will accept fast charge, then that's a good reason to take a look at this device so that you can recharge your devices that much faster. So that's a good reason. Who else is this for? Well, one of the things I found is that this will be something that I'm more likely to take with me when I go camping so that I can keep all my devices charged, not just my cell phone or my flashlights, but the camera gear that I'm using right now. I have to keep those charged if I want to record videos and having all that power in one unit is going to go a long way. Now, in truth is, uh, I usually don't need that much power. If I'm going out for a day, I don't need the extra power for charging all these devices. I carry a power bank with me, but that's more as a preparation in case I end up staying out overnight unexpectedly and I need to have my cell phone charged for emergency purposes. I certainly don't need this much power for a day hike. However, an extended camping, uh, you know, uh, hike or whatever, camping trip, this would go a long way for it. The third person that may, may be able to make use of this device is someone who's trying to prep for emergency. So as I mentioned, we're in the middle of a hurricane right here, right now. We have not lost power, but it seems like everybody all around us have. I've got lots of huge power stations that I'll be able to count on should we lose power, but they're costly. 
and you may not want to invest all that money into one of those big stations, yet you feel it's important to have the capability of recharging your cell phone at least a few times uh, over a course of a few days if the power's out that long. This device may be something you want to consider for that reason. Okay, so those are the scenarios I can see people using this for. Now, I've said a lot of good things about this. Is there anything negative I can say? I'm going to share with you a couple thoughts on this. These are not deal breakers. They're not negatives. They're not design flaws. They're just things I think could be improved. So let me just turn the device on again. Once again, you can see, hopefully it's showing up there, the 100% status indicator right here. But look at the size of that screen. I don't know uh, what the electronics are in terms of, inside of this in terms of display, but I would feel it would be really nice if in the next generation of the same device, they could provide a little more information on this device, maybe the outgoing wattage. So you had an indication of just how much wattage is going into your device compared with what you believe it or it's rated to accept, we'll say. Another one is how much time to your completed your charge. So if you're plugging your laptop, your cell phone or whatever in, this would show you three hours, two hours, whatever it is until it's fully charged. I think those are fairly easy to do. They certainly can do them on the larger power stations. I'm sure they can do it on this device as well. So maybe the next generation, they'll offer exactly that. Okay. That's everything I have to share on this device. I will be putting all the information I have regarding this device in the video description, including all the specifications and the link where you can take another look at it. And uh, I'd invite you, if you have any comments or questions that I can answer, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.